Welcome back to Canada. We are going to FDF Race Shop today, the makers of the famous angle kits that we run on a lot of the builds. An integral brand with Drift HQ, Josiah, the owner, fantastic driver. Uh, he put together a little luncheon for us today. We're gonna go to the track. I'm gonna get to drive some cool stuff. Uh, and yeah, we're gonna show you guys around. Sign the banner of everyone else that has. You in arm heaven. Mm -hmm. You in arm heaven. Adam, sample. <laughs> sample. Sample. Entry 50 lowers that are unreleased so far. It's the best best picture from the whole. Uh... What's up? What is up, man? How are you doing? Good Good to to be you. here. Yeah. This place is sweet. Hey, hey Mike. Hi. What's up, man? But, yeah, nice man. to meet you. Too, man. Yeah. Is this LS gonna change me? It's good. What, what is this for me? 660 wheel, but it's very linear. It's very linear. It's linear, you said. It's very linear. These are my favorite. I'm gonna walk through this shop as if it's how the products are made. So it starts coming in through this door, and then it goes through like seven different steps before we end up shipping it. Everything that's made here starts. Like a raw sheet of material. Start in your bed, wake Dude, up. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's <laughs> we just start literally... in the bed with him, okay, now what? It's a day in the life. <laughs> it's literally 20 seconds on the road. Like my house is super close. Here with Adam, and I'm super excited to show him the shop, show him the operations. Adam owns Drift HQ. Drift HQ sells a ton of FDF. I've been working with Duarte for a very long time, Drift HQ specifically. We're one of their best selling products. We've got a really good relationship. Uh, we did Prospect FD together. We have done a ton of business together. And thank you so much for coming down. I know it was a little bit here. of a trek, but three hours, but yeah. it's worth it. And then we're gonna head to our track, do some laps. Adam's gonna drive my S14. I'm gonna drive my Corvette. Thankfully that works really well. And we're gonna get some tandems in with a bunch of the boys. This is where my shop starts. The material comes in through this door. And from here, this is where our products are created. So and, then, and, from... and this started in your garage too, right? Like how long ago, yeah. was, how long ago was the garage days? So around five or six years ago, I was, um, an engineering uh, engineering technician for a company and I was doing this on the side building roll cages designing some products and selling those online through a big cartel like mm -hmm. the, the really mm -hmm. cheap oh, yeah, I remember the big cartel. so that was like where it started I had nine or ten products people were like can you make this for me and I'm like yeah I can draw that up and sell that no problem from there I just got a little 500 square foot shop in the corner of my dad's place and then I was like I need more I'm gonna go out on my own I'm gonna stop working full-time and take this on Got a 2,000 square foot building, got two employees, was still doing roll cages, and then I got into doing a few more products, and then from there, we just kept expanding and expanding and expanding, and now we're up to 16 employees, an entire manufacturing facility with engineers on staff. Everyone you can think of is tailored and take pride in their work, and they're very skilled. So, through the door, we start by just having a bunch of material sitting on the racks. Our angle kits are made of a bunch of different metals. We got aluminum, we got alloy, high strength steel, we've got regular steel, stainless steel, chromoly, all that stuff is just comes in and sits here. The first step of the of make, making the kit is to cut out the profile of the control arms and of the knuckles. That is done on our uh, water jet machine, which is right here. It's a big yeah, okay, so this water jet machine uses 50,000 PSI mixed with garnet, which is sand, and with, the, with those two things being blended together, it can cut through up to six inches of steel. Basically, as high as the head can go, that's how thick it'll cut. What dictates how thick it'll cut is just how fast you travel, so the thicker it go gets, the slower you cut. Got it. On the table, this is three-quarter thick uh, alloy steel. It's extremely strong. This material is what they use for the teeth of bulldozers, the tank armor of military vehicles, and that's what our control arms are made of. Sick. So it's pretty expensive stuff, but this machine cuts it no problem. It's a pain to drill. Like if you ever had to drill a hole through it, like good luck. It's gonna be tough. Bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's almost harder than the drill bit itself. So from this, because it uses so much sand and so much water, we have to get the sand out of the water. People don't see how difficult it is to do things like this. Mm -hmm. Duarte and I oftentimes, he's like, why can't you just ship it next week? I'm like, dude, it's made from nothing and I have to turn it into something. <laughs> I'm so glad that he got to see it. 
but we have to get the mud out of the tank after yeah. we cut with it and we're putting in 4,000 pounds of sand into this tank every three to four days yeah so we had to literally engineer our a cyclonic separator that pulls the mud out Damn. and separates it from the water then we have to get rid of it with a dump truck like every two months this machine alone is like the, the amount of challenges you have to overcome to cut material is crazy I feel like we haven't emphasized enough to the fact that all this stuff is made here in Canada because I feel like most companies at this stage would have just outsourced and had stuff made overseas. Like you're literally hand welding the stuff in house. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. Yeah, that's crazy. So on to the next step. After you water jet cut the control arms, they need to be welded. And because this alloy material has like really tough scaling on it, we have to sandblast them first. Yeah. Here, baby. <laughs> this is the cool room with smell. What's next? What's the smell? Is that cool? What? Cool yeah, the machines use coolant. Kool-Aid? Yeah. yeah. Sean thought I was joking. <laughs> so, not that cool, but an important step. The boys need a nice, clean material to weld. We sent it into our sandblaster. This is also doubling as our powder coating room. Okay. It's crazy that probably $6 million worth of products has come in into this room and then come back out again. <laughs> but we sandblast everything here, and it gives you an arm that looks something like this. Okay. So, it's, there's no more scale on it. It's really nice to weld, the prep is perfect. The other thing with a water jet machine that's different, I'm sure you've seen laser and plasma. Water jet does not carterize the edges. So it's a stronger cut, it's easier to weld, and it's perfectly clean and ready to weld because there's no heat disruption to the material. You're probably gonna see some products that we haven't even released yet, like our beefed up S chassis tension rod brackets. But these are basically, we made them for Skyline S13, S14, S15. Unfortunately, they're all different because the PRV was longer, so they made these longer and so on. But that is basically a product that we haven't released yet. It's been sandblasted, it's been welded, it's been cut on our water jet, and it's about to go to powder coating. It's beautiful. Yeah. Do you do special requests? Yeah. Titanium? Titanium for these? That would be that would That'd be, be a very lot. interesting. Have you yeah. cut titanium on the water jet? Will it do it? Oh yeah, sick. Yeah, so McMaster card, go on there, order with order a sheet. It's like a million dollars, and then you cut. <laughs> so all of our kits have a tongue and groove design. When you pair that with the jig that we use to make the knuckles and stuff, you get a really robust uh, welded fixture. So I'll grab one of the parts. This is a JZX knuckle adapter. JZX IS three hundred. Uh, basically, these pieces all insert and finger together with tongues and grooves, just like you would with like woodworking and stuff. So this almost goes together completely without a jig. And then when they bolt their spacers in and perfect everything and weld it, it's a very solid, almost mechanically impossible to come apart. The weld is just keeping the pieces there. Hmm. You can see where everything's gonna be aligned. These are tabs to locate parts. This locates a part. Tabs in, so it just locates, stacks it together. And then Cam has a bunch of spacers and stuff. And you'll use them to space out your gaps and everything from the top one and then it's located there and back here. So I was kind of half making a joke asking Josiah if he's ever sold or if he's aware of like takeover kids running FDF because like all jokes aside like it happens we don't support it as a drift community because it obviously makes the sport look bad um, but what's your take on it? So we have definitely looked up people's Instagram uh, depending on the chassis that they're buying an angle kit for we know the type of chassis that are generally used. It's like big four-door cars, mm -hmm. Cadillacs, uh, Chargers, stuff like that, Challengers. We only make angle kits for Cadillacs, and we have actually refused selling the product if we recognize that they were part of takeover, uh, street drifting, racing, whatever they're doing, donuts and stuff, hitting people. Like, we don't support that. Especially coming from Canada, we would get absolutely screwed if we take any type of behavior like that on the streets. So we don't condone it, and we don't sell the products to people that, that do that. I nice. think it's pretty cool. You could like, I don't, I'm not saying this like you should do it, but like you could probably make a whole business targeting sideshow kids with how big of like a market it is. But it hurts our sport so much. Yeah. Yeah. So we do not sell to those people, and uh, if they change and they get rid of it and they take it to the track and they like make up whatever, sure. Well, uh, and we definitely won't sponsor anyone that's doing something. <laughs> <laughs> like we would literally pull it off and we'd be like. Uh, here's a cease, you're not allowed to run the product anymore, or something like that. Part of our CNC department, as we pass through here, I'll show you guys the machines, but these are for you guys to take and everyone else. Little medallions that uh, Dylan designed machines uh, last week. I love it. Uh, so, 
as we pass through our machine shop, we just check out the welding. In this department, we make probably three to 400 parts. Some of them small, some of them big, but they all play a really important role in the angle kits. Every angle kit has between 60 and 100 individual pieces. Bolts, washers, spacers, hardware. And the knuckles can be made up of like 10 to 15 different parts as well. Here we have all of our handbrakes, our misalignment spacers that go in the heim joints. That's a heim joint, a rose joint, a rod end, whatever you guys recognize them as. People call them different things, but all those spacers that go in the subframe, they're all made here between our three CNC machines. The one here is our smallest lathe. Since buying this uh, two and a half years ago, we have probably run, what is it, Dylan? 30,000 cycles? We're like 38,000. Okay, so this machine is the smallest one, but it does the most parts. 38,000 cycles That's has cool. been run through this machine. It's paid for itself probably three times over, and this is what people struggle to commit to. Buying a machine like this, making it yourself, learning how to run it, it's a massive learning curve. It's very risky, it's very stressful, but we uh, took it upon ourselves to just handle the quality, take care of the parts, and it's paid off because now we have two more and we need more space and we need to keep buying more. So this machine, we're gonna let Adam run a program on this. Um, you can take a video of it. This machine is our live tooling lathe. It's a bigger version of that. It's got a milling head built into it so that we can make parts like this um, all in one operation. So this is what we call a smooth adjuster. It gives you the ability to adjust your alignment on a car without unbolting anything. Ooh, I came up with this design probably two, two and a half years ago. We've been implementing it into more and more kits. People absolutely love it. We make thousands of these parts and uh, they're 4140T chromoly. I was gonna say, this feels like a BMX part. Yeah. You can tell. Yeah. yeah, it's really high quality material. The threads are really strong. That's why we use this. And it's relatively easy to get in round stock form. So, Dilly, you want to show them how to run the program and then you can watch it through the lens there? Alrighty, so uh, we do have the first operation done on this guy. So, basically, it has faced the front of the part. We've done our rough diameter. We can do hex, thread, all this, part it off, it comes finished. We got like a little pip we just squeeze off there. And then after that, they go to zinc. So, then these two machines can still make their own parts otherwise right so yeah so that's zinc finished up that's what you, do you do your own zinc in house zinc is actually across the street so that's it worked convenient. out really really well like yeah. john literally comes across the street We're like here we go we got a bin of them it goes across he brings them back so that's super handy all right so we'll close that guy up and we'll continue on kind of tricky to see because of the coolant but the coolant is a very instrumental part but you have to the coolant will help get the chip away so if you're doing like a groove so what it's doing right now is actually creating this space right here so it kind of pecks out and then comes down and finishes without the coolant you're not going to get that finish it'll look kind of gummy this is what we're starting with here you got it yeah 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 so our compressor is off right now, so you have to make sure we don't run out of air. I will turn the coolant off so we have a better visual of what's going on here. So if you take a peek in there, it's actually going to use the tuck to like radius. Oh, oh that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, sick. The tool itself is spinning up on the turret and it's using the, the, the tuck to degree it right now. So you could just make your own bolts if you need a bolt. Absolutely. Yes, so yeah. sick. <laughs> we can, I mean, we can basically make whatever we need to here, which is very, very cool, right? So, yeah, it's going to do that. I'm going to turn the coolant on again so we get a nice shiny part when we're done. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. After that operation, we've got a hex in there. So that's what that'll do. That's so cool. We'll close it back up. The drill is next. We have to run coolant for it, so the drill because of how aggressive it, it machines a hole. We do have to run the coolant, but you can go ahead, press cycle start, take a peek in and just watch how fast it drills. You can open the door up right now, Adam. And then... Oh yeah, it's got a hole in there. You also don't have to use a pilot drill with carbide because it's so stiff. 
So you don't you get one drill, you just blast the hole out, it brings the, the thread size for the smooth adjuster, and that's done. And then go, we have an internal grooving tool, which we wanted a chamfer on this, because we want this part finished when it comes off. I don't want any post-processing. So we actually worked with Iskar to get a tool. It's, it, it's an off-the-shelf part, but it does the back chamfer from the inside, so it'll come in and do a groove, and then does a little chamfer from all from the inside, comes into the, the hole we just drilled, and then it'll thread through. We've got the finished part and it's basically ready to be parted off and then it'll I'll show you how the bar feeder works. So part is ready to go. The cool part on this machine is because it has the bar feeder, this is a parts catcher. So yeah, rolling it into there. And then if you watch the chuck, you'll now see the material gets advanced out automatically. So, oh wow, this is like connected to the block still? It, it's just sticky because of the coolant, I think. Oh, it's oh, sticky. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, that is all. So this is what the water jet will do. Uh -huh. We'll cut our blanks, and then it'll load in just like that. And then the first operation, we'll cut this entire contour. It'll do the radiuses, the pockets, thread the hole. How do you do the, you have to flip it upside down? Yeah, yeah, so the next operation, we have a set of... So cool. I love seeing this stuff. Mm -hmm. So the soft jaws will basically hold, these guys will go into the vices, and that contour, I basically project this in the CAD program, and then it lets me cut that distance into- So this is like a fixture that holds it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What is the reason why, like, I've had some products, Colette knows what I'm talking about, but I won't call out the, the name, okay. that are, uh, a cheap, let's call it a cheaper product, Sure. and their finish is super sharp. Is that yeah. just poor machine work, or like what uh, causes lazy, that? Lazy, so it could look be- at her, Look at her smile, she knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. 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 They're wild for the little email like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're talking like I was helping her install something, I won't say what it is, but like my arms were like really all yeah. over. Um, yeah, a lot of it, it would just be not enough attention to detail. The tool could be worn out, and they're just like trying to run that tool as long as possible. So like on an edge like this, or like there's a, a whole bunch of, of reasons it could happen, but maybe when they chamfer something, they don't have the tool tip set properly. So you're actually getting, it's not taking all the material away. So it's actually just like kind of engraving instead of like doing a chamfer on, on a finished edge. Colette, you need a, you need a Colette Davis spec heart and brick with hearts no, and No, I was already taking photos and talking about how the software works. So I was like, ooh, I want to draw one. And yeah. then figure it out on the software side. Send it over. That looks cool. cool. I want to say yeah, yeah, it's all good right now, so you can close the doors up. I thought I was going to be like turning the doors and stuff, I'm just hitting the start button, it's easy. <laughs> this, because the tool is a little bit larger diameter, it does a slow tool again. Watch this right Jesus, we, we go through like 780 a month or oh, yeah. something. And 580 of those are 5.8 right now. Yeah, a lot of 5.8 right yeah, now. Yeah. And you I offer two you. different uh, like uh, levels of Heinz, right? So we do offer FK, which is American made. We have them right here. Very small um, stock because we actually don't really get much of a deal on them. They're very expensive. Yeah, I was going to say, like I know I, I did a FK setup on my subframe and it was like over a thousand dollars just to convert everything to it. Yes. So the cost is like probably the same cost as the kit. But we have found a manufacturer so good that uh, working with them has been really good. The, they're three piece, really high quality material. Um, the tolerances and how long they last, honestly, they last years yeah. um, on my car. And we've been working with them for about two, two and a half years. So none of them would ever fail. We always made sure that they could hold 30,000 pounds. Like, they got to be the best. This aisle is where we assemble the kit. So on the table, we have a 350Z bearing S chassis kit, custom powder coated. So this is by request on our website. You select custom color, candy red with the 350Z bearing. This option's better because it gives you a hub that bolts on. It's the same, it's a 5x114 bolt pattern. Same brake spacing, so you keep your factory caliper, keep your factory rotor. 
and uh, it's just easier to buy a 350 bearing versus a 240. I imagine it's a little more durable too. A little more durable and you can go to the parts store and they got them in stock. Whereas yeah. a 240 bearing, absolutely do not have them in stock. At this table, we have all of our primary things that go on the kits. Ackerman plates, column bearings, those smooth adjusters that you saw, we send them out to nickel plates so they don't rust. Chromoly does rust. Um, but that's what they look like when they go into kits. Those misalignment spacers that I was talking about, we have them labeled and dimensioned like crazy on this shelf. <laughs> there is probably 10,000 spacers here. The ones with red are highly used, the ones with green are somewhat used, and we make sure that we have all the dimensions and the descriptions really well labeled so that yeah. when we're assembling these kits, you don't mess it up. Because yeah. we, we have some spacers that are so close in size that if you just looked at the two, they look identical. Yeah. But then they're 10 thou off or they're like one or two millimeters off. So we focus a lot on organization. We have infinite number of bolts and nuts and washers. Fine thread, coarse thread, imperial, whatever you need. You can build anything here. That's why I could build my Corvette because yeah. I have all this stuff. <laughs> Um, in this section, we've got all of our tie rods. These tie rods have been notorious for our angle kits. No one else really does tie rod setups like we do. Adam has it on his E36 after going through inner tie rods all the time. Yeah. He swapped his kit, which isn't our kit, to our inner tie rod setup. Hasn't looked back. Hasn't changed the inner tie rods. Doored people, smoked people. It's because I, I hit probably like four people this weekend, and they're still good. <laughs> yeah, so that's using our heim joints, which are capable of withstanding around 28,000 pounds of force on the 5 8 time joints, which is what we use on the inner tie rod. It's a double shear, it's a lot stronger than that socket style, and they last forever. I've never changed them on my S14. That car has been through four seasons of pure abuse. Yeah. That's basically it for this aisle. This section's a lot more boring, but this is the most important one. It oh, keeps yeah. FedEx and maybe I shouldn't name drop them, but it keeps all the companies that wreck stuff and throw them <laughs> out of the truck. Yeah. We keep the kids safe here by using those expansion packs, the peanuts, the foam, the boxes are all 220 pound tested from Uline so that they can handle the load of being thrown out of a truck yeah. with a 60 pound angle kit that doesn't get damaged. When yeah. people open it, they complain that it took too long to cut it out, but then the product is beautiful underneath. So that's where we do all of this. Basically, this is where the product exits. We use ship stations to send everything out through Shopify. And I know Juice HQ uses the same setup, but I know you work with Shopify and stuff, so. Ship station there. Ship station. We actually yeah. we tried to visit Shopify. Did you know they're in Toronto? Yeah. Yeah, the building is right outside of the restaurant. They wouldn't let us in. I think if anyone they'd let in, it'd probably be you. Yeah, that's what I thought too. But I don't have any pull there, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Maybe one day. <laughs> Shopify, if you see this, we want a tour. Peasant. Yeah. To be fair, it's just like a building with a bunch of desks. And it was us with like a group of eight people trying to break in <laughs> to just a corporate office. It did not make sense, but we tried. I want a tour Shopify. Can you make it happen? Can someone here, someone here has to work at Shopify that can give us a tour. There's a lot of people that work at Shopify. Yeah. Like hundreds of thousands. I want a tour too. So if he's coming back to Toronto, I'm going to be there. We've used them for four to five years and we use ShipStation a ton. It makes everything super seamless. This is not a promoter ad or anything. <laughs> Maybe we can make it one. We could. Yeah. I'm sure you could. Be like, yeah, I'll hey, call a guy. Check this yeah. out. Hey, yo. <laughs> yeah, but this is where the product leaves. It goes to the back door on a pallet. We send probably 20 to 30 kits per day shipping out. It's crazy that I've got this business that does stuff like that. But uh, I'll show you guys the design process and that's gonna be it for this tour. That, that should speak something to you guys that may think drifting is a small niche thing. The fact that 30 angle kits are coming out of Toronto every single day. I mean, you see the growth in the sport more than anyone, I'm sure. Yeah, it's drifting is something that's bringing in the demographic of the younger kids where you yeah. can have every level of driving, starting from really cheap used tires, go dumpster diving, whatever, don't do anything to your car and have an absolute blast. Mm -hmm. And then obviously from that, you get the adrenaline. It's a pretty safe sport, honestly. And it really takes from guys that BMX, guys that dirt bike, guys that do all of these adrenaline rush stuff, but maybe get injured too much. Jump into drifting because it's safe. You get the same amount of rush. The people in the community are awesome. Like it's always fun. You make sure that you have a really sick thing, like a pit bike or something to rip on, because that's half the fun of the track. Mm -hmm. And then the food is half the fun of the track. You're cooking with people, you're eating with people. It's just too much fun. It's not just about drifting, driving. Because really, you only do that for like an hour. That's it's true. like if you added it together. It's only this a weekend, quarter of the experience. We drifted total. We drifted a lot this week. We drifted a lot. Like this way weekend, more than any other event. But added together, 45 minutes, maybe, of like on track drifting. 
Whereas like if you did endurance racing or GT stuff, you are legitimately racing for like four to six hours. Yeah, that's fair. This is the foyer. We just kind of display some products. You can pull on these and, and feel them. Um, we put we actually put bearings in them. I don't know if you knew that. There's bearings in all of our handbrakes right here. Did you make this? Yeah, we made that like last week. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I'm gonna put a little bracket here just to make it even more solid, but we didn't have time. Our 3D printer, that just makes parts like this. So we have a prototype mini kit for an S550 Mustang, and then we have the actual machined chromoly part for an S550 Mustang. New product, never been released. It's gonna be something that you use with stock control arms. Throw this on, you'll gain 15 degrees of angle. It's gonna be pretty cheap and you can go back to stock if you want to. So that was tested and it's pretty much ready for market. We just need to uh, figure out the cost analysis of what this is gonna be and how marketable and how many people want it. This is just filled with stuff that we prototype and test out, lightweight Corvette door hinges, uh, an example of what an IS300 billet control arm would look like if anyone ever wanted one, random stuff like that. On my computer, I have my 3D scanning laptop behind me yeah. and that's how we, um, design things. This is a little thing that I was working on. It's an adapter for an E36 uh, knuckle. A lot of people modify their knuckles and that means that you can't use those bolt-on adapters that other companies use. So I wanted to make one that used the brake caliper mount and then the control arm pickup point. Eliminating the need to use the factory tie rod hole. Okay. I know you guys are familiar with that because you guys like your BMWs. Well, we appreciate the tour, but we are on a little bit of time crunch because we gotta get to the airport and we only have so many hours of the track, so I'm excited. You're gonna drive the Corvette? Yes. Cool, and I can yeah. drive the S14. Yeah, we're gonna do some tandems, get some two FTF cars together. Tommy's gonna get thrown in there, maybe the three of us, I think, could easily get a nice tight wall ride. Maybe we'll see okay. how you like the car. I'm down. It's, it will probably be the craziest NA LS I've ever driven. Yes. Sorry, go up. Is you, whose motor you can bigger? go for a ride in it though. Whose motor's bigger? It's a 440 LSX. I think it's around the same. Hers is a 444. Just saying. 440. It is? I thought you had a 444. 440. It's not all about the size. It's not Sometimes. About it. Come on, I didn't say <laughs> That was really cool. Uh, we're actually headed to a place now called Shannonville Motorsports Park. Uh, about the same distance from Toronto as the track where we had our event. We wanted to do it at this track, but they were booked pretty much for the whole year, so none of our dates worked. Uh, but we're still gonna go check it out and drive, and maybe there's a possibility if we ever do an event in Toronto again, we could do this track. But I'm excited to drive it. Your size it is a lot of fun and is local and close to FDF. <laughs> All right, just put it in park again. slow, wait for your boys to stack up, and then you line them up, you give everyone the thumbs up, and that's when it's time to party. Oh, 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 are there any judges here? No. Okay, that's good because uh, I think uh, Josiah should have moved a little further along. <laughs> He was just explaining to me the reason why the clutch is so light. It doesn't have a traditional uh, starter setup. It's just like a ring gear, so I think the whole clutch assembly only weighs like 10 or 11 pounds. So you'll hear it's like the snappiest sounding LS you'll ever hear. It revs like a street bike. It's sick. I'm stoked to drive it.
All right, Colette's getting buckled in. He said just press start. Yep. Oh, you gotta use some RPM, huh? So go up behind my Corvette. We're gonna do two sight laps, come back in the pits, and then the flagger will send us out. I'm just gonna show everyone the layout. Super cool. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot more clutch work than you'd expect. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was sick, dude. Hopping in a brand new car and chasing you down. Yeah. I didn't do the big section of the track yet, just because I want to get a little more comfortable with the car. Yeah, like but. realistically, with cars like this, if you want to have fun, we pretty much have to drive those corners and then tandem. Well, I was doing that for a tire too. I figured it would last yeah. longer. Like I wanted to do it because I just love sending it like yeah, yeah. full speed. But uh, if I want to chase you. Yeah, I'm down. I was going to let you chase me. I figured your tires were dead. Oh, they're, they're totally yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yours are... I probably still got a little left. No. No? I'm done? No, they're done. Wow, that was fast. Yeah, dude. Car's good, though? Yeah, it's good. Well, your, your Corvette would sound sick with a clutch like this. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, it would. I love the sound. Your Corvette sounds sick. For a Corvette, like... Does it? Yeah, your, you, your car sounds different than all the other Ross cars. I can always tell when it's you coming.
thank you again. That was an amazing experience, and I appreciate the tour. Uh, any closing words? Did you enjoy the event? Yeah, the LZ World Tour was amazing. Home track, kind of. Uh, I've been there many times before. Seeing all these guys in, I guess, my country, I guess, when I'm drifting in the U.S. so often, it's like, this is my country. It was incredible. Like, I love all these guys. The community is so good. Everyone here is such a high-quality person. Then we got to bring him back to my shop. Then we got to bring him to my actual grassroots track. I couldn't ask for a better weekend. Yeah, no, this was awesome, and I appreciate you putting it together, and uh, I'm very stoked to hopefully come back to Toronto. Toronto, at some point in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Toronto. Yeah. Thank you, dude. Yeah, thank appreciate you guys. you guys watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.